Okay, it looks like we're, uh, we're slowing down there. So I'll just, uh, just launch in. Uh, good morning, everyone, or now good afternoon, actually, as it's uh, one o'clock in Halifax. And welcome to today's business support series webinar. I kind of apologize because I have two monitors here. So it may not look like I'm looking at you, but I am indeed looking at you. Although I may be looking at my other, uh, my other screen. My name is Patrick Sullivan and I'm the President and CEO of the Halifax Chamber of Commerce. There have been a number of uh, new announcements over the last little while uh, and, uh, and even clarification on where some of the, uh, the funding uh, that has been announced for airports and those sorts of things are coming from. Uh, so what I'd like to do is just go through that today. I'm gonna do that in a fairly relaxed way. Um, so I would encourage you to uh, to ask me questions if you have specific questions about some of your unique uh, unique needs. Um, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, so I will sort of clarify up front that you shouldn't be taking all your advice from me. I would encourage you to get professional advice, uh, but uh, but I think I have a little bit of insight into some of the programs as some of them have been around for a while and some of them are updates of previous programs and of course some of them are new. Uh, so uh, happy to give you my opinion on, uh, on many of these programs. Um, if you have specific questions about hopes and dreams for additional programs, uh, as I am talking to, uh, to government on a fairly regular basis, if you want to ask me questions about those, happy to give you uh, the most recent information that I've heard from different levels of government, if any. Okay, uh, so at this point, I think I'll launch into this. I'll launch into it by, uh, by sharing my screen. So uh, let's just start out uh, by doing this. I think what I need to do is share my whole uh, desktop, uh, which I will do. I think you can now see everything. Uh, I can't see you anymore, um, so that's a bit of a problem. Let me just see what I can do to, uh, to change that a little bit. Um, I need to see the Q&A, here we go. Okay, I can see that now. And I want to see the chat. Maybe there is no chat. I don't think there is. Uh, so I think there's only a Q&A. So if you an ask any questions, uh, please do that in the uh, in the Q&A. Kayla, I thought I should be able to, uh, sorry, I'm just going to stop this for a moment while I take a look and see if there is a chat. There is a chat and I'm just going to open that as well from here and then I'm going to go back to sharing the screen. Okay, there we go. Now I can see the chat uh, and I can see the Q&A. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, you can raise your hand, you can type a question, you can do all of those kinds of things to, uh, to get us organized. So to get started, uh, this is the website of the Halifax Chamber of Commerce uh, in a section here that's uh, called resources. Oh, sorry, I clicked on resources. Oh, let me just slow down a little bit and go to COVID-19 resources. So that's where we're going to spend our time today on this particular page, uh, which will give us a bit more insight uh, into, uh, into what's going on. You can see my grandson there at the bottom of the screen. So let's just launch into uh, where we are. You can see there's a number of different sections here. Uh, some of this is a little dated, uh, dated in that it's still current, but it was released by various levels of government a few months ago. Uh, so we have information on reopening resources. I'll go through that in a moment. Federal resources, which is where we're going to spend the majority of our time as the federal government are the group that are providing the greatest amount of funding and then provincial resources and then municipal resources and then a little bit of uh, information on shopping local for the holidays and where you can shop local where you can get some additional uh, information affinity uh, partners and then business to business although, although i don't think there's too much in there so as i click on these things it's going to be a little it's not perfect for presentations as, um, as you'll see in a few moments when I click on some of these things, I have to go back and forth using my browser. But uh, if you're doing it on your computer, of course, um, you're not gonna be going back and forth. You're only gonna be going one, day, one way. So uh, we have information here on wearing masks when that was announced in July. 
I won't go, uh, won't go through that. Um, masks, uh, face masks required, sign in to post into businesses and workplaces. You can see it's just some signage. Um, and here's where you'll see it kind of gets a little messy as I have to reopen things each time. How to wear a mask poster. I won't click on that, but you can imagine. It's, um, uh, let's see, too small. Oh, okay. All right, let me see if I can make that bigger. There we go. Um, you know what, I'm gonna, I can make it bigger, but then I can't see the chat function. So let me just move the chat function to my other monitor. There we go. And then I can make it big again. There we go. That's pretty much as big as I can make it. So I don't know if that necessarily changed the typeface too much, uh, but uh, um, this is as big as it can get on my screen. So I'm hoping that's okay for you, Claire. Um, so how to wear a mask poster. You can see uh, it is a poster on non-medical uh, masks. You can see we stole it from the Nova Scotia website, from the Nova Scotia government website. Uh, there is a website on the, uh, uh, that Nova Scotia has. If I just take a look at that and uh, type in Nova Scotia um, and then uh, COVID-19, uh, you will see that the first thing that typically comes up in Google is this page, uh, which is the Nova Scotia government uh, coronavirus page. Has a lot of information on case data, alerts, news, traveling to and from, masks, uh, symptoms testing, working in business. So some information, posters, fact sheets, and resources. So you can see at the bottom of the page, some information on um, uh, posters, fact sheets, and resources, which is where we probably uh, stole that particular, uh, that particular link. I did want to mention the post promise. So um, I, don't, I can't really tell uh, where you folks are from. Uh, but if any of you are in the retail business or in the, frankly, any business, uh, you can take the post promise. Uh, it is designed to encourage consumers uh, to feel confident about your particular location, whether that's an office, a retail store, a restaurant, a cafe. Um, and it has five principles. Those principles are, of course, maintain physical distance, stay home if unwell, wear a face covering when required, clean and disinfect regularly, and wash and sanitize your hands. So this is just a, a great place to order post kits. You can get um, information delivered right to your, uh, to your location. I think the post kit, uh, I'm not gonna jump into it, but I think the post kit costs about 10 or $15, and it'll send you some tent cards, some stickers for your windows, and it is designed to show people, uh, consumers uh, or constituents or whoever they are, or even the folks that work in your office, that you are taking this seriously uh, and you are uh, following the, uh, the protocols to, uh, to ensure a safe environment. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it on the reopening resources now into the, the programs. So um, the government has recently expanded the Canadian Emergency Business Account, which is CBA. Uh, the Canadian Emergency Business Account originally came out uh, a few months ago, uh, and I'll click on this, uh, a number of months ago, probably six months ago now, uh, as a $40,000, um, typically a line of credit. It depended on the financial institution that you went to, but it was typically a line of credit. Uh, you could get that in different ways from your financial institution. In some cases, it was uh, a loan and they would put $40,000 in your bank uh, bank account. In some cases, it was a line of credit and you could draw on that line of credit. So it's a little bit different for each of the financial institutions. Those financial institutions include um, credit unions in our area or CUA uh, in Nova Scotia or most of the, uh, the major banks that you would be familiar with. So that $40,000, very important, $40,000 a number of months ago, and of that $40,000, $10,000 of it was forgivable, okay? So you could keep the 10,000 to utilize for your business, okay? It wasn't to be paid for dividends and those sorts of things, but it was to be used for your business, for expenses for your business. Recently, in fact, as recently as last Friday, the federal government, um, although they had talked about adding an additional $20,000 to that, 
uh, it finally went live last Friday. And now you have an additional $20,000 of which $10,000 is forgivable. So the previous one, 25% of the $40,000 was forgivable. Currently it's 50%. So $10,000 is forgivable. So it's a total of $60,000 of which $20,000 is forgivable. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, I mean, you all really need to think of these programs uh, as um, sort of a, uh, a portfolio of things that you should take advantage of. Um, don't just think of this as this particular program doesn't work for me. You need to look at all the programs and frankly, I would take advantage of all of the programs that you can take advantage of, okay? Um, and when I say take advantage, of course, I mean in a good way, uh, take advantage to utilize for your business to keep you uh, in good shape as we get through the, uh, the pandemic. So do look at all of the programs. This is one program. It's not perfect for everybody. It's been added to over time. So if you, you may not have qualified in the very first round a number of months ago, uh, because you may have received dividends as, uh, as income. Now, folks who've received dividends as income do qualify for this program. So it's, it's important to kind of stay up to date on these and to continue to apply um, because things have, many things have changed with this program over, uh, over time, okay? Um, so again, it's now up to $60,000 for eligible businesses of which $20,000 will, uh, will be forgiven. The forgiveness sort of starts, um, uh, is available if it's repaid or if the non-forgivable portion of the loan is repaid by December 31st, 2022. Okay, so that's a long way away. It's still two years away. We're in 2020, two years away. So if you pay back the ultimately $40,000, you will, of 60, you will have the opportunity to keep the other $20,000, okay? There's a number of quotes here, but you can see um, as of December 1st, more than 793,000 CBA loans have been approved, representing over $31 billion in funds. Um, I don't know that there are specifics on this, but I can tell you um, the information I've received from the federal government is over $500 million uh, in these loans have gone just to Nova Scotian businesses, okay? So over $500 million have gone just to Nova Scotia businesses. It's important to remember that when we get to the provincial amounts um, as provinces don't have as much money uh, as, the, uh, as the federal government, um, they haven't provided uh, as much money. So you need to take advantage of the federal government programs um, uh, primarily as they are primarily the uh, kind of the, the sort of spot you should, uh, you should start, okay? Um, I'm not going to go through all the details, but to qualify for SEBA, you need to have a business number and either meet the payroll eligibility criteria uh, which I think is much lower now. I think it's around $40,000. I'm not, not sure, so don't quote me on that. But there is more detail if you, uh, if you click on some of these links. Here it is, sorry, $20,000. So payroll eligibility between $20,000 and $1.5 million or, uh, or demonstrate a minimum of $40,000 in eligible non-deferrable expenses. So again, this was a big issue, this whole payroll eligibility in the first months. That's no longer the, the case, so long as you have eligible uh, non-deferrable expenses and have filed an 18 or 19 uh, tax return, okay? So that's a little bit about SIBA. Uh, I'm gonna keep rolling along. Again, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask the questions in either the chat or the, uh, or the Q and A, okay? So that's the first federal government program. The original $40,000, original meaning available a number of months ago, and most recently, as of last Friday, uh, the uh, $20,000 in additional funds, and of that twenty ten thousand dollars $10,000 of it is, uh, is forgivable. The new Canada Urgency Rent Subsidy. So this is a new program. You may have remembered the previous rent subsidy, which was called uh, CICRA, the Canadian Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance Program or something. Uh, 
it didn't get a lot of uptake uh, from, uh, from small businesses or many businesses at all. Um, this program is different. So it's different in that um, it will provide payments directly to qualifying renters and or property owners without requiring the participation of landlords. Okay, so you don't have to wait. You don't have to apply to your landlord. You don't have to get your landlord's acceptance. You can do this directly. Okay, so that's a pretty significant change. Um, it also, um, if we look at the, uh, sorry, the period, I guess we could, uh, we, could start, uh, we could start here. Let's just kind of go through this a little bit. You meet one of the conditions, you had a CRA business number, you had a payroll account, you purchased the business assets of another, of another person, um, or you met some prescribed conditions that might be introduced. There are no prescribed conditions at this time. So are you uh, an eligible business, charity, or not-for-profit? I won't go through all of this. Uh, I'll let you click on that. Uh, but, uh, but many, many businesses uh, are, uh, are eligible. You do need to show um, a revenue drop if you, if, you if you have one, and it will help you. Uh, but there is no minimum revenue drop required to qualify for the subsidy. The rate your revenue is dropped is only used to calculate how much subsidy you receive. So if you, uh, in, in the past, you used to have to have a 70% revenue drop. That's no longer the case. But if you've only got a 5% revenue drop, then obviously you would not get very much of this uh, back. If you have uh, greater than that, then you would get more, more money back. There is an online calculator to help you kind of go through this. You can see you actually put in the period, the period, the starting period was September 27th, so it was retroactive to September 27th. There are two periods thus far, and I believe this is uh, scheduled to go all the way through to, uh, to June. So it's going to go for quite a period of time. You would talk about uh, sort of affiliated businesses. Um, are there any other businesses that you have that are applying for this? You then calculate your subsidy. Um, I uh, need to, I wonder if I can just do this rather quickly. Uh, let's see. Um, I was playing with these earlier and you could uh, calculate, okay. Uh, so you can select the period, which is in this case, September 27th. Uh, do you have no, uh, make your selection, uh, compare 2019 with a claim month. And then if your revenue was, $100,000 in that month. And the second month, oh, sorry, did that incorrectly, $100,000. And then this year, it's 50. Uh oh, I jumped ahead. Uh, well, I lost my, uh, lost my online calculator. Did it, did the numbers stay? Uh, the numbers did not stay. So anyway, what it did show using the online calculator, I can't do it quickly, is that it would show um, the uh, it would show the amount that you've uh, uh, that you would qualify for. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking at the question. If you had an amount of payroll last year, but now you do not due to COVID, will you qualify? Um, uh, I think that might be a two part question, Joanne. But I, if you still have a business. Um, if you don't have payroll this year, if you had uh, that amount of payroll last year, but you now do not um, due to COVID, it's okay. So it's travel related. So I'm assuming you're still in business, but your revenue has gone to nothing. Okay. So your revenue has gone to nothing. Oh yeah, you qualify. Um, and in fact, you, you are exactly the kind of person that they're looking for. Uh, so yes, you will qualify. Um, the other person who, who may qualify for this is if you're, let's say a restaurant, restaurants are right now ordered closed. Because you're ordered closed, you not only qualify for the base amount, you would qualify for an additional amount, which could get you up to 90%. I don't think, Joanne, that you would qualify for that, uh, but you would qualify, it, it sounds like based on the limited information, uh, that yes, you would qualify and it would be a fairly reasonable amount. Now, let me just, I wanna go into um, in addition, what the eligible expenses are. Um, let's see, because it does say expenses you can plan, you can claim <clears throat> that you can claim, um, and, and 
it does talk about um, uh, rents, uh, of course, um, eligible expenses up to $75,000 for business locations, pretty significant amount, $300,000 in total locations. Um, it is for amounts paid to an arm's length entity. Uh, and then it does get into eligible expenses. It is in addition to rent, it is base rent, it's insurance, it's utilities, it's common area maintenance, it's property tax, uh, including school and municipal tax, and then uh, customary ancillary services. So if the landlord mows the lawn and then charges you 50% of that because you share some of the space with him, um, then you can claim that as well. You can't claim sales taxes, damages, interest, and penalties. So, so it's not only rent, it's rent plus some of these additional things, okay? Um, I would encourage you, if you have a bookkeeper, all of you, if you have a bookkeeper or if you have a, uh, an accountant that does this work for you, I will say they're likely more skilled at this. Uh, our, our accountant, uh, she doesn't do this one, but she does the uh, wage subsidy, which we'll talk about in a moment. And it can be a little complex to, uh, to do. So, uh, so I would encourage you to get some, uh, some help to do these things. It's likely worth um, that, uh, that investment. Okay, so um, rent subsidy, uh, to kind of summarize the rent subsidy, you need to think of it this way, it's rent and additional um, uh, sort of things on top of rent. Um, it is kind of the, uh, the amount that you can claim if you're ordered closed, as some of you may have been. If you're a gym or a restaurant, if you were ordered closed, you can get an additional top up. It's also not for the entire month, so if we were only if you were only ordered closed for two weeks um we're now at three but if we were if people were ordered closed for only three weeks of the one month period they can claim that three weeks they don't have to claim only the one month period okay so you don't have to uh, you don't have to wait okay uh sorry that was a lot of uh, a lot of information on the uh on the rent subsidy uh but it is a it's a good program um we did apply here at the Chamber of Commerce just to see how it worked. Um, our rent is $15,000 a month um, and we received potentially about, well, I think it was $951. So um, we had some erosion in revenue, but obviously we didn't have enough erosion in revenue to cover all of our rent. So it only covered for us, you know, less than, less than 10%, okay? Um, into the uh, emergency wage subsidy. Uh, this is, uh, sorry, I'm gonna back up for just a moment. Um, there's, there's two parts to this. There's, there's the emergency wage subsidy. Way back at the beginning, for those of you that are, that are there, you may remember there was a 10% temporary wage subsidy. So for the first three months, if you didn't have a significant decline in revenue, many businesses did, but if you didn't have a decline in revenue, everybody could get the 10% wage subsidy. Okay, so that 10% temporary wage subsidy, subsidy was for the first three months. Uh, it was a three month measure that allowed eligible employers to reduce the amount of payroll um, they need to remit. Okay, so uh, it was a bit tricky, but you, you kind of didn't submit things. Um, just, just to mention that, and then we went to the emergency wage subsidy. Okay, so the emergency wage subsidy, um, I won't go through this in gory detail because there's a lot to it but there are recent changes. So one, the subsidy is extended to June, 2021. Um, the maximum subsidy for periods eight to 10 will remain at 65%, 40 for the base rate and 25% uh, top up in periods eight to 10. Um, uh, you will uh, now use the same one month revenue drop. It starts to, it starts to, to kind of decline a little bit. Um, the deadline to apply is January 31st, 2021, or 180 days. Um, but the announcement announcements were that this will continue uh, and it will increase. Okay, um, so it will need to. Uh, uh, it will. Sorry, I'm trying to read the question at the same time. I shouldn't be doing that. It will increase in January. So in January, February, March, my understanding is that we're going back up to the 75%. In the last few months, this has been in decline. So it's kind of been declining a little bit for businesses uh, that, um, 
uh, that uh, that had been uh, taking advantage of the Sioux. Uh, sorry, I'm going back to to Claire's uh, questions. Um, what about service companies? Uh, so again, for the for the rent subsidy, if you um, if you have had a decline, then you would be able, able to uh, to um, apply. Okay, uh, if you've been ordered to close, you will uh, you will get the additional funding. So really, there are some organizations. I don't know if I can find it. Yeah, I think I could actually because you can see my screen. If I go to the uh, alerts, um, I'm sorry, not, yep, uh, not the alerts. If I go to the medical order, it will articulate, uh, let's see, financial health, working in business, post respect. Yeah, I think it's in here. Um, case data, here we go, provincial state of emergency health protection order. The health protection order does state the businesses that were ordered closed. So. I know I'm going through this quickly. It's probably going too fast on your screen, but I will slow down in a moment when I get to the businesses that were ordered closed. Um, so here we go. Uh, effective July, right? Uh, sorry, I've got to get to section uh, five. Here we go. Uh, Okay. Uh, here we go. So the geographic area, uh, which is Halifax, Bedford, Sackville, Dartmouth, Southeast, and I think Hans. Um, uh, well, I'm sorry. I don't think I'm going to find. Find. Uh, maybe I am. Well, sorry, I don't think I'm going to find that quickly. I apologize. So um, to answer the question, businesses that were ordered closed include museums. Um, it includes uh, restaurants, except for takeout. It includes uh, gyms. Uh, it includes libraries, ex but libraries are still allowed to do curbside ordering. So I know that's a little broader than just restaurants for in, uh, in sort of in-place dining uh, and gyms there are a few more but if you're saying service companies like service companies that would serve if you are a, gym, a company that cleans the machines at gymnasiums you, you are not ordered closed you can't go in because the gyms are closed but you are not ordered closed okay so sorry that's probably not the answer you wanted but um anyway that's if i'm answering your question correctly claire okay so you can you can clarify it in the q a if you if you need to so sorry, back to the wage subsidy. Basically, you, you are getting a portion of the wages of your employees back, okay? So up to, in this case, in periods eight, nine, 10, $734. So if you have an employee, uh, the weekly benefit is 734, so that's about $1,468. Uh, so what would that be? That would be about $2,900. So if you've got employees, that are sort of in the 35 to $37,000 range, you're gonna get back, um, uh, you know, a, a good amount of, uh, of, uh, of their income. Um, if, you, if they earn more than that, you don't get it back at all. So if you've got, and I know it's a bad example, if you've got an employee that earns $100,000, you're only going to get um, the uh, wage subsidy on the first um, sort of, you know, $35,000 or so. Okay, um, and then we can see um, this is based on revenue drop uh, in periods eight to 10. It was a little bit different in the, uh, in the previous periods. Um, and if you've got you know, sort of a, uh, a drop of zero to 50%, then you're gonna get 80% of, uh, of the revenue drop. So you know, at zero to 50, well, sort of 50%, you're gonna get about 40% here, but then it's going to go down. Okay. Um, uh, and it is going to go theoretically back up in Jan, Feb, March. Okay. Uh, so the wage subsidy, the wage subsidy is 
frankly, at this point, the best program that the government offers. It's one that many, many companies are on. Now, if you don't have revenue coming through the door, it doesn't help to, uh, doesn't help to pay your staff, but it certainly helps to keep the staff uh, and it helps uh, you to, to continue to pay them even if you're getting in a portion of the, uh, of the revenue that you used to get in, okay? Um, and again, you know, uh, there is an expectation that this will go up again a little bit in, um, in that period, Jan, Feb, March, okay? Then it will likely start to decline again as it has already, it'll likely start to decline uh, as we head into the uh, into the coming months. Um, the chamber is a beneficiary of the uh, uh, of the uh, of that program. Our revenue has been significantly eroded, as you can imagine. Uh, about thirty percent of our revenue is gone because we can't do in-person events. Um, uh, so we are claiming the uh, the wage subsidy, and it is doing what it's supposed to do and what the government intended it to do, which is to keep our staff employed uh, so that uh, so that we can continue to provide the, the service that, uh, that you need. So that's a little bit about the wage subsidy. There are calculators I would again, you know, to, in, to enable you to calculate the wage subsidy. Uh, I did try to, I did do this earlier today, but it does get a little complex uh, almost right away, but you can use the calculator. Uh, you can download a spreadsheet uh, to enter multiple staff, uh, or if you have only one or two or three staff, you can you can uh, kind of do that on online calculation uh, your uh, yourself. And you need to put in you know what you're claiming. Need you need to put in your CPP, your EI, all of those kinds of things for the employees. That's why it is a little bit easier to use the uh, use the spreadsheet and then put in the uh, put in the totals. Okay, to uh, to calculate your total total wage subsidy. All right. So I'm only on the third or fourth thing, but uh, sadly, uh, many of the resources kind of go down from here. The emergency business account, uh, we kind of talked about that. And, uh, and you can see uh, many of the folks that are providing that. I won't, uh, I won't click on those. The Regional Relief and Recovery Fund. So this is from ACOA. This is, uh, and I don't think they've got, yeah, they do have it uh, sort of up here. Um, you, it does provide uh, a location for you to click uh, and get uh, more information. On, on what that program will look like. I know for the most recent round, they're figuring it out again right now. So they haven't announced it. If you're in Halifax, then you may apply to SEED. Uh, so C-E-E-D, many of you will know SEED. You'll likely need to apply to SEED. Um, if you're in a region outside of Halifax, Dartmouth, kind of this area, uh, you will, likely uh, apply to the CBDCs. Uh, so uh, their community business development corps or something. Um, and they will, uh, they will help you to, uh, to submit applications for the RRRF. It's not usually a small amount of money and it's usually for um, businesses that are a little more impacted and it's slightly larger amounts. Uh, but I, I would encourage you to kind of take a look at that. Um, uh, as the criteria becomes available. We'll be sending out an email as soon as they announce again what the next round of financing is for. So you don't have to check back every day. Uh, we'll let you know uh, when, that's, uh, when that's available. Um, there are other areas. I'm not gonna go through them in, in great detail. Uh, most recently announced was this uh, Black Entrepreneurship, Lo Entrepreneurship Loan Fund. Uh, so if you are a black owned business or entrepreneur, you should take a look at that. Um, there are additional benefits. Um, the Canada Recovery Benefit, which is ultimately uh, kind of the um, uh, what what was originally served and has now become a portion of uh, a VI. Sorry, I have to keep jumping back to this. Uh, and then the new the new program, which is the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit. So if you have staff that that are sick. Uh, with COVID or they have to take care of a sick relative with COVID, they can apply for the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit and they can get up to 10 days sick pay. Um, if let's say you have a business and you don't pay uh, sick pay, so they can get up to sick, uh, 10 days. Um, the caregiver benefit is a similar thing if you have a, uh, an individual who's, uh, who's ill. Um, emergency support for culture, heritage and sport. So, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, on May 8th, uh, there was an announcement of 
$500 million. Of course, that doesn't go quite as far when we're talking about Nova Scotia in particular. Um, but there is, uh, there is funding for this, um, for uh, arts, primarily arts and culture um, uh, based uh, organizations or community museums. Um, so, you know, if you're that kind of business, you should uh, take a look at, uh, take a look at that. Um, uh, can export. Uh, the uh, there is a program called Can Export, which has typically supported businesses as they try to export by providing them with funds for travel. Travel, of course, is not uh, not something that's happening right now. So they will provide the funds directly for you to uh, to um, uh, kind of develop your business and do some of that work um, here. Uh, attend virtual trade shows, do digital uh, strategy consulting, as well as uh, advertising and search engine optimization. So you don't have to go. So if you have a business um, and you're trying to ship internationally or try to sell internationally, uh, the Can Export Fund has pivoted to provide with you with uh, additional funds. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, uh, I'm not going to go through all of these things. Um, you know, there are boost for essential wage workers, community support, uh, emergency community support fund, uh, benefits. Let's see, uh, emergency community support fund. Um, investing 350 million, let's see, uh, on each national partner's website. So United Way, Canadian Red Cross, or community foundations, you can apply for funding if you're a not-for-profit from those organizations who've, uh, who've received some additional, additional funding. Um, and I think I'll stop there. So uh, you can click through some of these things. I, I mean, they are, tend to be very unique to your particular business, okay? Into the provincial, uh, provincial programs, there is a program right now that expires tomorrow. I think we're at the 10th, no, we're at the 9th, uh, expires Friday. Uh, the Tourism Accommodation Real Property Tax Rebate Program. So if you are an accommodation uh, or a tourism accommodation and you either, and this is important, either paid your tax or you've entered into an agreement with the municipality to pay your tax, okay? Originally, the program was you had to have paid your tax. Now, you don't have to have paid your tax, but you need to have had conversations with the, with the municipality to enter into an agreement to pay your tax at a future date, okay? Uh, so, and you can get, I think, up to 25% of your accommodation of your real property tax back, okay? Um, this is the newest program, uh, the grant program. Uh, it was called the Small Business Impact Grant, uh, sorry, Small Business Grant. Uh, Small Business Impact Grant was a, a different program. It's a one-time grant of up to $5,000. Uh, being made available. It, it's not really $5,000. I kind of hate to say that. It's um, a one-time grant of up to 15% of their average monthly gross revenues for April or from February 2020 if it's a new business to a maximum of $5,000. Um, so it, it is up to 15% of their average monthly growth, gross. It is only for businesses that have been ordered closed. So we're back to those businesses again. It's for businesses that were ordered closed. So it is restaurants um, who were ordered for in, uh, in uh, location dining um, and it's for, uh, it's for gyms in particular. I know there are a few others, but those are the ones that uh, are most uh, impacted. If you received that small business impact grant in the past, you will likely qualify for this again uh, and you will qualify um, they'll reach out to you. So if you received the grant before, they will reach out to you. They're supposed to do it this week. I would encourage you to check your spam folder. Um, for some reason, the government's email likes to go to spam. Uh, so I would encourage you to check your spam folder uh, and, uh, and get, uh, take a look for the, uh, the email that they, uh, that they may have sent so that you um, can get the monies right away. If you did not qualify in the past, but you are one of those businesses ordered closed, you didn't receive it in the past, then you will be able to apply either next week or the week after, okay? Um, I don't think there is a date that this is closing yet, um, uh, but uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, no, I don't think there's a date yet. So, you know, we should be fine. I, I am a little worried that this is gonna bump up against Christmas and there's gonna be less people to answer questions and things. Uh, so if you do have the opportunity to apply, then I would encourage you to apply right away. 
Um, uh, I did have a question this morning from somebody who said, and rightly so, when businesses were originally ordered closed, they were only ordered closed for two weeks. Um, and now it's three weeks and let's hope it's not longer, but it, it could be longer. Uh, the comment that, uh, so I asked that question of government and the reply was, that may be true, but the 15% is on, uh, is the average monthly gross revenue. Uh, so, um, you know, so it is on a monthly, not, it wasn't just for, uh, for two weeks. Uh, oh, sorry, look, here's a better description of the businesses that were ordered closed. Uh, um, they include uh, Jim Pilates, Rocks Climbing Studios, Escape Rooms, uh, Throwing Establishments, it's pretty specific, board game cafes. So all of those were ordered closed, okay? It can be used for wages, supplies, other costs. Um, and businesses formed after March 15th were able to apply apply uh, for this program. There's no cap on annual revenues. Okay, so so this is a good program. It is very specific uh, and it is um, likely uh, for businesses. Oh, sorry, I hit the wrong button. It's likely for businesses uh, that, uh, that are in Halifax or in the greater Halifax area. Okay, there are additional programs. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, the, uh, I'll, I'll touch on a few. There's the agriculture response program that may not impact a lot of organizations here on farm support. Uh, emergency support for arts and culture. I'm not going to click on that because I think it ended uh, last, uh, here we go, the deadline was December 7th, so that's over. Um, if you did miss it and you think you do qualify, please let me know. Um, you know, of course, government has closed it, but we likely know folks we could send uh, uh, a note to if you did miss it. They don't really want anybody to, uh, to miss it. Um, it. Things that are ongoing, small business loan guarantee. Uh, so, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so here's uh, from Nova Scotia Co-op Council. Um, you know, I'd encourage you, I think we mentioned it, you know, to go to CUA um, as they're the uh, sort of primary uh, group inside the, uh, the Halifax area. And, and what this is, is a loan that's backed by the province of Nova Scotia, okay? So it can be a loan granted for a term of up to 10 years. Um, the, the guarantee will remain, uh, the province of Nova Scotia will guarantee 90% of all term loans. It's still, you still have to meet the loan criteria, but it, it's my experience that the credit unions are a little friendlier about loans uh, than, uh, than some other folks. Um, and let's hope they can be even friendlier if the province of Nova Scotia is going to uh, um, is going to uh, guarantee 90%. Not that other financial institutions are not friendly. Uh, I shouldn't say that, uh, but uh, but CUA folks, or sorry, CUA or credit union folks, uh, do seem to um, uh, do seem to focus a little bit more on that uh, on that area. And that is a a loan program uh, that's only available through the credit unions. Um, the regional relief and recovery fund. We've kind of talked about that on the federal side. Uh, I won't go through the restrictions. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, the way to think of the provincial programs is first think of the federal programs, right? You should always think of the federal programs first because frankly, there's more money. Then you can think about the provincial programs. Um, to this point, the province of Nova Scotia has offered up about $50 million uh, in funding. Um, and if you compare that only to the SEBA, uh, which has delivered over $450 million just to Nova Scotia, you can see it's a pretty significant uh, disparity, I suppose, between those two groups. Um, the province is designing their programs to fill in the gaps um, that the uh, the federal government may not uh, may not hit. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm hoping you guys can continue to see things. I think it's actually the same size, um, uh, but it just lets me see uh, a little bit more on my screen. Um, Let's see, what else we got? Uh, municipal resources. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through an awful lot of this other than to say uh, the single biggest thing that uh, the municipality uh, has been very open about talking about is uh, municipal taxes. If you have municipal taxes that are due, I would encourage you to have conversations with the, uh, with the municipality. Uh, they are open to those conversations and open to developing a, uh, a program to, uh, to support you. Um, Shop Local, uh, there's a, a couple of links here. The Amazon, sorry, the Evergreen Festival, 
uh, is a festival that's taking place right now, uh, primarily in downtown Halifax. Uh, but I think we've also got a link to um, the Not Amazon uh, page, uh, which uh, if we click on Halifax, we can see lots and lots of uh, things that are available um, from many different organizations. So would encourage you to uh, put up uh, your, uh, your link or share that to the Not, uh, uh, not Amazon uh, Halifax. I think we have our own page. Let me just go there to see if I can find it. Um, I thought we had a buy, but I don't know where it is. Um, I think we have our own link called buyhalifax.ca. I'll probably get that wrong. Oh, no, here it is um, it, with uh, the Chamber of Commerce and the Halifax Partnership. Uh, so we do have some information where you can uh, buy where you can buy Halifax, shop by region, seven ways you can support local, local wish list, best of Halifax. I will have to make sure that we get that on our homepage uh, so, that, uh, so that folks can see it if it's not already on our, uh, on our homepage. Um, probably should be. Uh, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll have, to get that, uh, have to get that up there. Um, sorry, back to, back to our page. Uh, and then a couple of other things. We do have uh, Chamber Affinity pro, uh, provi providers where you can get additional funding. I'm just going to stop there because um, I can't really see anybody while I have that up. Are there additional questions or comments uh, or hopes or dreams that people would like to see from the federal or provincial government um, that, uh, that you don't think they're delivering at this point? If you want to stick that up in the Q&A or in the chat, Happy to uh, to hear that. Um, we are talking regularly to the uh, to the province. Um, I think you can stick your hand up if you wanted to uh, say something. Oh, here we go. Uh, Joanne kind of feels like a business is in the middle. So. Um, when you say in the middle, you mean that uh, you don't qualify for a lot? Is that a fair way to think about it? Uh, yeah, so if it, it, yeah, I mean, I would agree you're not ordered closed, but obviously travel uh, has been significantly impacted. Um, it, it's, a difficult, it's a difficult situation. I mean, you can apply for some of these. Uh, yeah, I, I see your point. Uh, no customers as no one is traveling. You're absolutely right. I mean, you are, you're like the guy or, or gal who, you know, are trying to clean the machines at the gym. You want to be able to work, but there's, you know, the gym, is, the gym is closed. In your case, you want to be able to, uh, you know, encourage people to travel, uh, but folks just aren't traveling uh, at this, uh, at this time. Um, yeah, you're in a difficult situation. Uh, I mean, there's, there's simply no two ways about it. Uh, I, I don't have, I, you know, my, I guess my suggestions would be uh, take advantage of the of the government programs. Um, it sounds like you do have uh, you do have a rent you do have rent. Um, take advantage of the uh, of the SEBA especially um, to to get that sixty thousand dollars and the twenty thousand dollars, which is of of it that will be forgivable. Uh, I mean that's really really important for you. Um, uh, you know, I, I've, I've had conversations with other travel related businesses uh, and, uh, you know, they've tried to pivot a little bit to offer their services um, as kind of telephone experts. But as yet, as of yet, I don't know that they've, uh, uh, you know, found a way to, to do that. I, I take your point, you know, the fear is not being able to pay it back. Um, of course, on the SIBA, I mean, if you really have a fear of that, you can get the $60,000 you can put forty thousand dollars in the bank and just use the twenty, um, and that way, you know, you'll be sure to be able to pay back the forty. I know it's not ideal, but it at least gives you twenty thousand uh, dollars. So you you should you should definitely take advantage of that twenty thousand dollars, right? Don't don't leave money on the table. Um, uh, so that's that's at least something. You know, someone said to me the other day should we be applying for this? And the answer is yes. You know, if, 
if you think you qualify, you should apply. Um, you know, it's always better uh, to, to have the money in your pocket than to have it in somebody else's. Um, you know, and don't depend on some of these programs to be around forever. Um, I, I think the vaccine will take a while, but uh, I know the vaccine will take a while. But, you know, if there's an opportunity to, uh, to get some of the funding, uh, to get some funding now, um, good, goodness knows, they may, they may say the vaccine has accelerated things and it, they may cut some of the programs. I don't expect they will, but, uh, you know, if there's an opportunity to get it, then I would encourage you to get it. Other questions, because we're coming up on 50 minutes. Uh, questions or comments? Again, anything else you'd, uh, you'd like to see from whether it's the federal government or the provincial government? Dr. Strang and Premier McNeil have a, another press conference on Friday this week. Um, we will we'll see what they say. Um, last week, they, or I think a week and a half ago, they announced the extension of the, let's call it a lockdown uh, in the Halifax area. The epidemiology is much better than it was, obviously, with single digit cases. Um, uh, and you can get tested. You know, if anybody would like to get tested, you can get tested at Zatzman Center uh, to, uh, uh, to kind of make yourself feel good and just to see if, uh, if you could have in any way come into contact. If you know any younger people, um, 18 to 35 in particular, um, encourage them to come in and get tested as well. Um, uh, simply because the epidemiology in the last while has said they're at greater likelihood of, uh, of, uh, of having something. So encourage you to do that. Um, we've been encouraging, um, you know, for Joanne, we've been encouraging testing at the airport. Um, that is a bit of a, a hole in the dike, if we can put it that way, uh, in that, uh, you know, there, there are almost 500 people arriving at the airport every day. Um, they are, uh, they need to self-isolate. Uh, they need to, uh, they need to be uh, sort of locked up for 14 days um, uh, so that they don't have any social contact. Uh, primarily, um, it's a little bit different for rotational workers, but uh, generally, they're uh, they're locked up for uh, for 14 days. Um, and so our our comment has been: we now have testing capacity. We should test those people coming from the airport, uh, and that may allow um, eventually some reduction in quarantine time uh, with testing uh, to ensure that we have a safe environment. Um, don't know that it's going to get us all traveling again immediately, but it might get us traveling soon, sooner than later. Okay, well, I think then if there's no more questions, then I'm going to call it quits there. Thank you, everybody, uh, and uh, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, my email address, you can send an email to president at halifaxchamber.com, uh, and we'll be sure to look at your particular situation uh, and get back to you with any suggestions or comments that you, uh, that you may have. Okay? Thanks, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon.